Hello, ka? How are you doing? Okay, so let's start. It's our second lecture for implementing and managing cybersecurity. We were talking about our learning outcome one, in which we were talking about understanding the principles of cybersecurity. There are multiple principles that we need to follow whenever we are dealing with the cybersecurity and its related concerns. Today, we are going to explore the benefits of monitoring users, devices, and activity on the network. Like, what are the benefits of uh, monitoring all these things in our network and how it makes our experience better? Also, we will examine the process of creating a cybersecurity culture in an organization. Whenever we talk about cybersecurity, there must be a proper culture for its use in an organization if we want to achieve the maximum out. If you are generally introducing cybersecurity measurements in your organization, but the culture is not uh, corresponding to that environment, then definitely it's not going to work for you. So you need to make a proper culture in your organization, and we will see how we can create this culture. Also, we need uh, we will analyze how home working can increase the risk of a cybersecurity attack. There are lots of jobs that are offering us to do the work from home or the remote based jobs are offered by multiple organizations. So we need to see what are the risks of uh, these. Uh, we can say that these are basically considered as one of the best things for us in our today's era. We uh, think that this is the biggest uh, innovation of technology that we are having. So we can say this is one thing which is having multiple benefits as long as the drawbacks. So let's continue with the benefits of monitoring uh, user devices or activity on a network. So first, it is related to um, different kind of benefits, which helps us to identify the trends, identify unknown devices, manage missing patches. You can manage data access, manage user access rights, and deploy group policy. So all these benefits are easily accessible by the user if they are going to monitor the users, the devices, or activities on a network. So let's explore them. Monitoring users, devices, and activity on a network offer numerous benefits in the realm of cybersecurity. And uh, as there are lots of advantages, but the key advantage is that you will have the ability to detect and prevent potential threats and security incidents. There are multiple ways that helps us with the help of the cybersecurity in order to make the security the higher priority for your organization. By actively monitoring user behavior, the device activity, like how well the user are dealing with the network and what is the role of devices there, uh, the devices that the users or the employees of your organization are using to connect with your network are the ones that are basically doing some activity with your network, which needs to be clear in order to make it secure from cyber theft and um, network traffic organization can swiftly identify suspicious activities such as unauthorized access attempts, malware infections, or data exfiltration. So all these kind of activities which could be happened with the use of uh, anything uh, misused or misbehaved by anyone or um, any employee or any device that is connected to the network is um, the main reason for that cyber theft. So the uh, real-time monitoring empowers security teams to respond promptly and effectively. It has them taking the necessary measures to mitigate the risk before this, they escalate into significant breaches or disruptions. So we can manage them even before they arise. Additionally, it helps us to do the continuous monitoring with which we connect as, a, as an early warning system, providing the crucial indicators of potential security incidents or vulnerabilities within the network. So you can easily identify them by carefully analyzing user activity and network logs. Organization can detect anomalies and patterns like it will help you to identify is there any any misuse or anything that is disturbing the overall net, uh, network and it's working. You can easily detect it. And uh, that may indicate a security risk. This proactive approach enables the organization to identify and resolve security issues in a timely manner, reducing the impact and likelihood of successful cyber attacks.
this is basically something which is considered as a proactive approach proactive approach is something which we do in uh, in order to save ourselves from the cyber attack and uh, it is basically before the happening of that furthermore uh, monitoring user activity is instrumental in detecting insider threats which involves the malicious action uh, perpetrated by individuals with authorized access like the people who are having the access and they are doing some uh, misfunctionalities intentionally which helps them to breach the security of the organization so these are the risks that could be managed by the proactive approach so that we may not face lots of trouble with the help of it. so some of its main impacts are given in the next slides let's see them so the first one is identity trends these trends in the context of cybersecurity refers to the patterns and the changes observed in how identities are managed and identity trends in the context of cybersecurity refers to the patterns and changes observed in how identities are managed and authenticated within an organization's digital environment like you are in an digital environment definitely whenever organization is working on the networks and the people are connecting to it from multiple devices definitely there is a proper digital environment in which you are working so there is uh, there are multiple identities who are going to be connected to your system so you need to check all the identities who are going to be there you need to manage them you need to authenticate them which one is having the access to use or access which parts of the network as technology evolves identity management practices have become more sophisticated with the adoption of multi factor authentication biometrics and identity federation these are the trends or the you can say that the techniques which helps us to make the identity trends safer like we can have the identities in a safer zone if we are having the multi factor authentication we can easily check the people uh, like double check the people if they are having the access to it or they are trying to mislead or uh, falsify the information that we are having keeping up with identity trends helps organizations enhance their security posture by implementing modern and effective identity and access management solutions so it's a kind of technique which helps us to save lots of things and we can easily manage our overall solutions that we have created for our identities then we will identify unknown devices unknown devices pose a significant risk to the security of an organization's network let's suppose your organization is uh, at a very larger number of employees who are working there so you need to check if there are all the people who are connecting to the system authorized to use it they are having proper access or they are misusing it managing unknown devices involve implementing measures to identify and authenticate devices attempting to connect to the network so if someone is having the credentials to connect to the network they will be able to do that otherwise they need to see they are not allowed to access it they need to request for it and then they can join it this can include implementing network access controls device profiling and enforcing policies that allows only authorized and recognized devices to access sensitive resources so uh, this could be achieved by giving the access or you can say that the specific access to specific employees who need who directly need to get the access it other of it otherwise we can um you can say that define the roles uh, we can assign different roles to different employees in one network and it saves us to allow the people to have the access to the only components of our network which are basically in need of them to to get access of otherwise they will not be able to access the other sensitive resources which are confidential for the organization or are not directly related to those employees by effectively managing unknown devices organizations can reduce the risk of unauthorized access data breaches and potential malware infection so uh, we know because the unknown devices that are connecting to the system will definitely be have the potential to infect our system with the help of any uh, suspected activity or uh, any malware infection they can infect us by any of the identity theft so we need to identify the devices that are going to be connected with our system then we will see the or manage the missing patches software vulnerabilities are frequently exploited by cyber criminals to gain unauthorized access to system and network 
managing missing missing patches involves implementing a systematic process to identify prioritize and apply software updates or patches to address known vulnerabilities so this is something which will help you to address all the vulnerabilities that may arise so uh, you can say that this is also a proactive approach it helps to manage and uh, uh manage the overall resources and also you can have the better management of all the identities and the priorities and definitely you apply software as a proper systematic approach which helps you to manage every activity potentially organizations must have robust patch management procedures in place to ensure that system and software are kept up to date with the latest security patches this has mitigated the risk of known vulnerabilities being exploited by threat actors and also if we have updated security patches it helps to um, fight with the malware infections and any kind of infections that may arise because as we have updated versions of the patches we can deal with the updated version of the malware as well if we are having the backward patches installed in our system definitely it will not be able to fight with the newer malware or the infections that can cause threat to our system then we can manage data access managing data access involves implementing controls and policies again this is the same thing we can um, assign the roles to uh, significant employees who directly need to have the access to it and ultimately they will use it for the safe purposes this includes implementing access control role based access control and data classification frameworks these are basically the methods which helps us to give the access to the system that are directly in need of it by managing data access effectively organizations can prevent unauthorized access reduce the risk of data breaches and maintain the confidentiality and integrity of sensitive data because our data is secure from all the people who are not intentionally needy to work with it so what we can say we can easily save our data from such um infections that can cause issue for our uh, data authentication and the security of data then the manage user access rights this is again the same thing but the terms are different but the ultimate goal is to save the system from all the uh, like the suspicious activities and the unwanted threats user access rights management is the process of controlling and administering the user privileges within an organization's network and system user privileges are the basically the roles that are assigned to the user and they cannot have the access to any other component of the overall network and the system it involves granting appropriate access levels based on the job roles and responsibilities like if someone or one employee who is directly needed to the accounts department uh, can accessibility he don't need to have the accessibility to any other department like the it department or any other they just need to have the access to finance same as if we are talking about the it department he only need to have the access to the it department they don't need to have the access of finance management or the anything that is related to that uh, certain particular approach so it saves the data of one department from the other department from one employee to the other employee this is basically something which helps us to manage the overall job roles and responsibilities as per the requirements of the employees it helps to regularly reviewing and updating access permissions if someone needs another permission for limited time period you can assign them the role and then after the, that that work is done then you can exclude that limit from their access management and promptly revoking access when an employee changes roles or leaves the organization effective user access rights management ensures that users have the necessary privileges to perform their duties without granting excessive access that could lead to misuse or compromise of sensitive resources then we can deploy the group policies group policies are a set of rules and configurations that can be applied to groups of computers or users in an organization deploying group policies allow organization to enforce consistent security settings software installations and other configurations across multiple devices or user accounts this centralized management approach streamlines security management ensures compliance with organizational policies and reduces the risk of configuration errors or inconsistencies 
So all these things that are basically whenever we need to work with a group of people, they should have proper policies which will help them to get the access of the security settings like the security for individual device or all the devices will be managed and the installations of the software for the whole group will have the uh, like the proper and timely deliveries and they will have install it installed within the given time and at the same time they can easily get the access to it and each and every method or the approach will be centralized with the help of the group policies which will which will help them to get connected to it and ultimately all the group members can have the uh, opportunities or the things or the resources that are applied to them at the same time so by focusing on these aspects of cybersecurity organization can strengthen their overall security posture mitigate risk and ensure that identities, devices, patches, data access, user access rights, and the group policies are effectively managed and aligned with best practices. This basically these all points that we have discussed are having almost the same features that they are providing. But what it its main concern is it's all is directly related to the security of our network. Our network is secured with the help of such activities that are helping to make our experience even better. Please let me know is everything clear for me? Yes, ma'am. All clear. Okay. So I'm going to start the next part. It's basically to examine the process of creating a cybersecurity culture in an organization. So here, uh, if we talk about the indicative content, whenever you will do your assignment activity, you should understand the importance of an organization in developing a cybersecurity culture whereby staff are not afraid to admit when they have made a mistake and that they highlight any concern related to cybersecurity such as suspicious email. So these are something, uh, uh, some points that are basically related to the rights of the employees who are going to have the access to the overall uh, organization and if they are having anything that is not um, accurate for them or authenticated and also they are having some suspicious activities that are happening to their personal emails or anything else that is happening which is not admirable by at, uh, by any cause so they can easily share their concern and raise that concern to the higher organization so for that purpose we need to have the organization with all the installed security culture which will help them to get the get all the desired efficiencies and the required security concerns already installed in the system. So uh, cyber security culture refers to the collective attitudes, behaviors, practices within an organization that promote and prioritize cyber security awareness and vigilance. It is essentially for the learners to understand the importance of developing a culture within an organization where staff members are encouraged to so here it will help us to add uh, the like the staff members or the employees it will get the chance to easily um, own their mistakes at their end and they can easily share their concerns that are related to cyber security and this culture helps us to get the open communication because the communication is the key to the success a strong cybersecurity culture fosters an environment where employees feel comfortable discussing and admitting their mistake without fear of retribution. Because if your employees are not encouraged to share their thoughts, then definitely they will be having things in their mind which will which may con create the conflict, or sometimes it will not be very easily understandable for all the all the people to adjust with the people who are not easily sharing their thoughts and they are keeping everything at their end. So it encourages open communication channels where, where staff can share their concerns, report suspicious activities, and speak guidance on cybersecurity best practice. So the next one is the trust and support. The organization should have a culture in which the employees can easily feel com confident with the concerns, and if they will share, they will be taken with proper and the serious environment and their um, concerns will not be ignored and also they should uh, feel like the overall there is all, also a sense of shared responsibility which will help them to think for the betterment of organization and if they will get that trust and support from the organizational and then they will work harder for the organization next thing is reporting incidents 
Learners should understand that in reporting incidents such as a suspicious email or a potential data breach is crucial for timely response and mitigations. It helps the organization investigate and take appropriate action to prevent further harm. So you need to let the organization and the staff or your managers know that each and every activity needs proper attention in, in every form. If you are encouraging staff to report incidents promptly, help in identifying security gaps, implementing necessary controls, and improving overall security, cybersecurity resilience. Next thing is continuous learning and training. If you are creating a cybersecurity culture, you need to give a proper training and you need to set the minds of your employees at a level that everything is secondary, but you need to work harder for the organizational security. You need to work for the overall um, security of your organization if you are talking about any activities, if you are talking about any any activity like um, if it's related to evolving cyber threats, landscape, common attacks, vectors, and the best practices for maintaining security, all of these things should be educated by the people. They need to understand that they are the main pillars of the organization. They need to do proper research before uh, before doing any activity, if they don't know anything, they can ask for uh, ask others to help them out. And if they will have proper training and the learning procedures done, then they will work with the network and the system properly. Leading by example, leaders and management play a crucial role in shaping the cybersecurity culture. They should exemplify desired behaviors, emphasize the importance of security, and actively participate in cybersecurity initiatives. When leaders prioritize cybersecurity, it sets a positive tone and encourages employees to follow suit. So if you are the leader, you need to set an example for the employees to follow. And when they will have a proper and well-managed example from your side, from the organizational side, then they will follow it and ultimately everything will be managed properly. Next thing is encouraging collaboration. A cybersecurity culture encourages collaboration and teamwork. If you are working in an organization and you are running an organization, if we generally talk about the organizational culture, not specifically to cybersecurity, at that moment, we still need to have properly um, collaborative team who are going to work with each other and share their knowledge, insights, and the best practices with their colleagues. And it will uh, give others a sense of motivation. And also, we can intrigue others to work like the good employees who are doing their work efficiently. And also, it creates the awareness and the practices are ingrained throughout the organization. So the collaboration and the teamwork is a must for the good culture of the organization. By fostering cybersecurity culture that values transparency, accountability, and open communication, organizations create an environment where employees are not afraid to admit mistakes, report concerns, and actively contribute to maintaining a secure workplace. This culture of ignorance and continuous improvement strengthens the organization's cybersecurity posture and helps safeguard sensitive information and assets from potential threats. So this is something uh, we can consider as a good culture for our organization if they want to achieve the maximum security concerns. I hope it is clear. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so next we need to analyze how the home working can increase the risk of a cybersecurity attack. So the risk that uh, are considered by the home working are the non-compliance, unauthorized access, using workarounds, using personal devices, Wi-Fi security, and access. So let's discuss them. Home working is also known as the remote work or the telecommuting introduces a certain risk to cybersecurity. It's crucial to understand and address these risks to ensure the security and confidentiality of organizational data and system. However, if we generally talk about this thing, Although we all take it very advantageous thing when we talk about the home working and the remote based work, but this is something which is if we talk about the organizational level, this is something very difficult for them to manage because they there are lots of employees who are working with the team. If the team is very small, they may uh, think to manage the all the team members properly. But if the team is a larger uh, number 
of employees then definitely you need to manage all the employees and it becomes difficult for managing the security for each and each indi uh, every individual so uh, this could be having multiple risk associated with it which are really needed to be handled with care so the first thing or uh, the first risk is the non compliance the home working may pose challenges in maintaining compliance with cyber security policies procedures and regulatory requirements employee may unintentionally overlook security measures or fail to adhere to established protocols when working from home this non compliance can create vulnerabilities and expose the organization to potential cyber threats so if they are doing anything unintentionally and any mistake happens then uh, they are simply uh, like they can feel sorry they can uh, share their concerns that they are really sorry for that thing but still organization need to pay up so this is something which needs to be handled with care in order to avoid this risk then unauthorized access working remotely increase the risk of it because um, uh, maybe the uh, person who is having the access can uh, they can simply falsify the use of the credentials that they having or someone steal the information or the credentials of the authorized person and use it unethical unethically to access your sensitive information and system so the network may not have the same level of security as corporate networks making them more susceptible to hackers to attempt hacking and unauthorized intrusion employees must use secure connections such as virtual uh, private networks which are vpns fixed app uh, access the company resources and ensure the confidentiality of data however there are still uh, lots of risk for you are giving them some of the Uh, VPNs access that they can only use to your system. It will uh, work as a barrier to the malwares and the theft. Using workarounds, um, in a remote work environment, employees may resort to using workarounds or alternative methods to overcome technical limitations or access resources not specifically provided for remote work. So the misuse of the resources or uh, use not using the proper workaround time is one thing which is most common in employees and some of the employees take this home working better due to this reason that they can have the uh, they can easily bypass the workarounds and um, they were they will not be asked for their deadlines or the limitations to the technical work that they are they were expected to do but they didn't. the work around may bypass established security measures in advertly compromising the organization's cyber security defenses it's crucial to educate employees about the risk associated with using unauthorized work rounds and emphasize the importance of following approved procedures so they cannot use anything which is not authorized for them to use like some of the people try to use uh, some kind of softwares that are not their purchase and they use some patches and uh, different kind of patches to get the access of that software this can have multiple threats or cyber theft so we need to make sure that these kind of activities are not being being done with your network because if organization is dealing with the employees who are working from home they definitely need to be tracked so that they cannot be using such kind of things then we have using personal devices remote works often involve the use of personal devices such as laptops smartphones tablets these devices may not have the same level of security controls as corporate provided devices potentially increasing the risk of data breaches and unauthorized access as people use different devices in their devices they have multiple softwares installed and they don't know which software is having malicious activities installed in it and ultimately it will um, may increase the risk of data breaches employees should be aware of the security implications of using personal devices for work purposes and follow best practices such as implementing strong passwords enabling encryption and regularly updating software so that they cannot be having any kind of malicious activities or malicious softwares that are being installed in their devices then the next one is the wifi security and access home wifi networks may lack robust security measures compared to corporate networks we can unsecured wifi connections can be exploited by cyber criminals very easily to intercept sensitive data transmitted over the network the hackers can easily 
access the weak security passwords and ultimately they can misuse your information employees should be educated about the importance of securing their home wi-fi networks including changing default passwords using encryption controls like the vpa203 and regularly updating their router firmwares so that they can now uh, have the secure wi-fi connection and there may not be any risk of it so these are the home working risks that may arise in the journey of uh, working the, of the employees from their home so let me know if uh, everything is clear or do you have any questions no i'm very clear it is clear okay then i'll see you in the next class till then take care of yourself alafis afis my to the next